Approximately a million years ago, Flight Rising user Kitten Cakes requested that I do an in-depth guide of how the Flight Rising auction house operates and how I work the auction house. I know that this is a pretty specific question, you know, just asking how to use the various levers in the Flight Rising auction house. However, I would like to talk a little bit today about how to pull those levers, how it functions, and then also how I use the Flight Rising auction house on a more lifestyle philosophical level. So let's get started. Starting at the most basic level, I don't recommend going to the auction house unless you have planned to either buy or sell something. I don't recommend perusing the auction house for fun. That's a good way to end up buying something you didn't intend to buy. To access the auction house, it's on the left hand side of the page underneath the shop icon is listed as the auction house. Once you get there, you have three different separate auction houses to consider. There's just your flights. I'm in ICE, so I have access to ICE auctions. Then there are realm wide, which include all of the flights. And then there are private auctions where you list something for a user or a user lists it for you. And you are the only two people who can access that. Now from here, you can click through and it'll take you to the option of either buy or sell. And you can also just choose buy or sell and then the drop down of those three options in the upper right hand corner. I tend to do this with two open windows whenever I'm trying to buy or sell something just to keep context in mind. The thing I think needs a little bit more explanation is how to manage selling items. How I do this is I have two windows set up like this and I open buy on one page and sell on the other. This is so I can see what items are selling for as I list them. So as you can see, I have quite a few items listed here, but I'm not going to go through all of them right now. That would probably take about 15 to 20 minutes. And I don't want to spend that doing this. So what you're going to do is go to the category. This is an apparel item, apparel, apparel, they both match. And I'm going to search for this exact item. In the search parameters, you enter the item name. You could enter the price range. For instance, if you're looking to buy a dragon for a certain amount of money, you could put a cap right there. I could do this right now with this just for the heck of doing it. Category, while you're just browsing the auction house, which is something I do not recommend doing, you could search by category. So this is for like head, body, wings, tails, legs, extras, and accents and then by currency. If you have gems, things are usually much cheaper in gems than in treasure. So the overall cheapest price this is selling for is 5,000 treasure. So I'm gonna post mine for 4,500 treasure. Great. Just to do that again, I'm gonna clear that out. Simple gold bracelets, copied it, pasted it, searching for treasure only because I'm selling for treasure only. And then the cheapest selling price is 7,000. So I'm gonna post it for 6,500 for seven days and in the realm wide auction house. Now to show you just a little bit of browsing everything that there is in the auction house setup that there is to see just because I thought that that might be one of the most high demand things to keep in mind and I don't want to bury the lead is uh, how to go through each category. So for food, this is something that I do not regularly, but if I go out of town and my food points get down to zero, when I come back, then I'll want to look for food. And so here's a really, here's how I've found the best way to search for food. So you enter in the categories that you need, which are usually seafood and meat for me, treasure only, and then I want stack sizes, I don't know, of at least two, uh, food points of at least six, and search. And then once you've done that, you're gonna search for a unit price lowest to highest. Okay, so these are the cheapest per piece, right? So it's 151.5 treasure per 
six food point golden laced rooster. And for this toad, it's 257. If you want to take out the stack size, you can. And then you're just going to end up with a lot of singles showing up. But unit price, lowest to highest, when you're searching for something like food, is the best option. For me, this is the only category that I will search by unit price because I'm ideally going to get stacks. Like, I would prefer to buy food in stacks. Like, if I'm buying food, I am trying to eliminate hunger in my lair. And I will pay a ridiculous amount of treasure to make that happen. Let's go ahead and buy some now that we're talking about it and thinking about it because I am relatively low on food points. We're going to buy this puffer fish. And I picked that one just because it was a very large stack. And we're going to convert that to food points. So when it comes to be feeding time, they will all be fed. When it comes to the materials tab, what you'll probably be looking for here are transmutation objects. And this is listed, it's easily accessible. Depending on what you're trying to make, you might want to be using the unit price the lowest to highest here as well. I think it's always helpful to search for treasure only just because I'm using my gems for specific things only and grocery shopping is not one of those. If you have set up your search a particular way and you know you're going to be coming back to it regularly, you can save it as ooze search. And now when you go into food and you come back to materials, you can load save search of ooze search and it just searches it for you. For apparel, like I said, you could search for different body parts. I do not recommend that you just browse and peruse the auction house though, especially for stuff like apparel, because if you're playing the familiar game where you collect familiars, you're going to be swimming in apparel. I have too much apparel all the time. I don't dress up my dragons, but I get these apparel pieces all the time and I'm honestly trying to get rid of them faster than I can keep up with. When it comes to dragons, this is where you have the really complicated interface. And I recommend that if you are going to peruse the dragon section of the auction house, that you first do whatever type of dragon bookkeeping and administrative work that you do so that you are working with the frame of mind that you already have a lot of dragons and that you're up to date on feeding them and bonding with them and setting up your breeding programs so that you've already preoccupied yourself with the dragons that you have before you start looking for new dragons. Make sure you're all up to date and all caught up there before you start just looking around. If you want an unnamed dragon, like a dragon that's never been named, uh, you'd want to search for it there. Honestly, dragon renaming scrolls are like 6,000 treasure each. That's nothing. Uh, you have that same old currency. Then you have the breeds listed. Then the gene sections, you just get to pick between the different genes that are listed there. And the way that this works is you could add many. I wish it was easier. Like you could just click gene type. And so I could just click rare for each. And then male or female, primary color, secondary color, tertiary color. But this is my favorite part. You can enter in a range. For instance, if you are okay buying a dragon that has the primary between pink and smoke, you could search for it. And it'll give you only results in that color range. And if you want to understand a little bit more about how those color ranges work, I recommend that you check out my color wheel video. That's a good video of breaking that down, how you can know which colors are in range, but it also is laid out here, right? So if you do raspberry to bubblegum, then the colors that are going to fall in that are raspberry, wine, mauve, pink, and bubblegum. Close that up. And then age, hatchling or dragon. So a hatchling is a baby and a dragon is an adult. Breeding status, ready or not ready. So ready to breed or not ready to breed. Generation, first generation, just means that it's the first dragon in its bloodline listed. And then color pattern, 
This is uh, the X's. You've subbed that in with a color. So it's like platinum, 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 silver, platinum, silver, platinum, platinum, silver, silver, platinum, silver, charcoal. And they don't have to be consecutive. They could be any colors. And then ID digits just uh, how many digits you're looking to buy. Some people care about this. Just the type of work that I do with my dragons, it's not really something that I care about. And then something that was recently added, eye type. So if you want to see only the ones with the new eyes or a specific eye, then you could search that in. And you could stack these all any way that you want. So you could have like, it's set up so you only get dragons on that side of the color wheel that are only ice element, that are ready to breed and have multi-gaze. All right, and there are some dragons listed. And let's throw that in there too. All right. And then the one thing I didn't think I mentioned was Coliseum level. So if you want a dragon that's at least level 19, you could enter that in. Or if you want a dragon that's 19 through 23, you can look that up and they are for sale or like let's say just level nine there you go and the reason why level nine and 19 are available is because there is an achievement for leveling up dragons to level 10 and level 20. so people will sell dragons that just hit level nine or just hit level 19 so you could buy it and then get the achievement from when you level it up to the next level. I do have a saved search. It's, uh, I call it Plat Through Pearl. It's just all of the rare jeans, treasure only, wild called codal, platinum through pearl coloration, and ready to breed. This is the pool of dragons that I buy from when I'm looking to buy dragons. And I just have it saved because it just becomes tedious to enter it so many times. And if I want to change something, like instead of looking for a wild Claracodal, I just swap it out with the Imperial and Nocturnes. And that's a good way to just access all of the cool dragons that you know that are consistent that you want to have. It's just a way to keep up with what you have prioritized. And then reset to defaults and it clears everything out. That's everything to keep in mind while in the dragon tab, which is honestly what I use most often. Everything else is a lot more basic. Uh, so familiars, you search by treasures or gems. Mostly I search these by the item name and a good way to do it is if you're trying to play the familiar hunting game, I have a spreadsheet where I keep track of the prices for all of these familiars and how they are acquired because sometimes it's easier to just straight up buy them than to craft them. Did I not get one of those? Oh, that must be new. Anyways, it looks like there's a new familiar that I need to buy. I'm just gonna do that real quick because I have a bunch of dragons that have awakened familiars and I'm just always trying to swap out new familiars so that I'm not wasting that daily click on something that's less than optimal. There we go. Now you have that so cute illustration. Oh, I wonder if those are the, anyways, I digress. So that is the familiar category. Then if we move on to battle, you could search by element because the battle stones are elementally aligned. Skins, you can look by species because that's how they work. Treasure. The good thing is you could search by their skins or accents. I wish you could filter by like holiday or all the time, or like holiday versus user uploaded. Then we have specialty which the categories are specialty items. So this is where you would get the scroll of renaming. These are so cheap. So that's why I have zero problem just naming dragons and throwing them in the auction house. Then there's other, and you could search for dragon eggs or skin blueprints or holiday items. And then when you go to sell, you don't really have to break it down in that detail. You just have to click on the thing, 
and it's just really easy to get rid of stuff. When it comes to talking about how I use the Flight Rising auction house, I sell apparel, buy food, and list dragons. I also buy dragons occasionally to help with the programs that I'm working on, my breeding projects. I also talk about them as though they're my breeding programs. They're the same thing. I go through once a week, usually on Sundays, and I post all of the apparel and then I list everything for seven days so that the next Sunday at the same exact time, I can go through and just resell everything that did not sell. I can go through the process of expired listings and replace them, change their amounts, whatever it is, why, why they didn't sell. However, the process of listing them takes a little bit of time. That's why I don't do it very often. I do it once a week because that's all I can stomach it for. It definitely would help to do it every day. As I bond with familiars and I open chests, I get more objects and when you're in the Colosseum, you acquire new objects. Taking care of those things as soon as you get them is the best way to take care of them. And it's easy on a game like Neopets where you're probably not getting that much a day from your dailies. However, on Flight Rising, there's a lot of clothing that you get on a very regular basis. I sell the clothing because I care about a lot of things on Flight Rising, but Dragon Dress Up is not one of them. A lot of people do though, so people buy this stuff. And it has a huge sell value. So I could use that treasure for other stuff, like buying familiars and jeans for my first gen dragons. I'm not going to record myself going through this entire setup because that would just take too much time. But frankly, that's how I do it. If you have any questions or concerns, problems, leave them in the comments below. I'm sorry it took so long for me to do this. Sometimes life gets busy. But here it is, my guide on how to use the Flight Rising Auction House. Thanks. Bye.